Hey, it's Dean here, and I want to run you through some of the features and updates to Sales Navigator that's going to really help you sell better and sell smarter. So I'm going to give you a whistle-stop tour, and if you want to know how to use these in a more sophisticated way or how to join them up into your sales process, do drop me a line. And if you like this video, please give me some feedback wherever you're watching it. Likes, comments, shares, that'd be great. So there's no doubt sales has changed in the last couple of years. And I just want to, before we dive in, I want to run you through some stats so you can see the data behind what's happening in sales. So I'll flick through them and then I'll show you some of the sales now features. So I just put these on a little slide here. So uh, simply, remote working is here to stay. It's creating a challenge for people who want to call prospects. We know this. This has been around for a while. And the other thing is, because there's not DDIs, people are ringing mobile phones, creates all sorts of things. Some people, uh, you know, in the UK, for an example, calling somebody's mobile phone is seen quite intrusive, which might cause issues with your GDPR policy. But, but still, getting accurate mobile numbers and calling prospects is a challenge. But despite that, the decision makers, the buyers, are telling us 50% of them are saying... It's actually making it easier. It's actually making it easier to buy. So take what you will from that. I'm sure from a sales environment, finding it hard to reach buyers because they're working from home is not necessarily a good thing. And then 30%, 30, less than 30%, sorry, of sellers are now relying on cold calling as an outreach technique. It's fallen to very low levels, which is understandable. You've got people not working in offices anymore. Data is hard to come by that's quality. Um, you know, the tur churn on B2B roles is quite high at the moment. So you've got a lot of out-of-date data in terms of mobile phone numbers and people changing jobs and all that kind of stuff. So it's just naturally cold calling is, is more difficult. Um, it's not gone away, but it is more difficult because you just can't find everybody uh, uh, or easily find everybody. So what do you expect? Outreach volumes have gone up. And why does this matter? This matter is really important for the new sales navigator features. The volume of outreach, sales outreach globally has gone up by 70%. So all of that cold calling traffic, all of that activity has gone to email, to LinkedIn. So the fall has been replaced um, and then some. But here's the scary stat. <laughs> outreach response rates have fallen by 30%. Now, that's the case on LinkedIn. That's the case on email. And obviously, we've talked about cold calling. So this sets the scene for basically a very challenging sales environment, not just because of all of these numbers, but we've got a broader economic situation going on. There's more uncertainty in the world. And so decision makers are naturally taking more time to make decisions, but also are more cautious about making um, engaging with people because they don't know what their budgetary situations are. You get the point. So LinkedIn's really stepped in with some great features, some new features that's going to really help you. And I'm going to keep this video short and sweet and just show you some of them. And again, if you want to really leverage them, that's what we do. We help sales teams. We've had to adapt our training as a business for sales teams into how to effectively open opportunities through LinkedIn. We've had to change them because of those stats, because of what's happened, but also because of where the world is in terms of um, uh, LinkedIn's features. So first couple of features I want to talk about is um, in your sales navigator over the next couple of weeks, you're going to see... what buyer personas appear. Now, buyer personas are simply a way that you can program in. These are the decision makers I really want to talk to. And what I'll do is I'll go to my uh, daughter, daughter's LinkedIn, uh, who is here somewhere. And I'll show you this on Sales Navigator because it'll be useful. The feature is actually rolling out at the moment. And it's, it's still very basic here. But what you can do is build personas that match your target audience. 
So if you're trying to reach CIOs, CISOs, if you're trying to reach managing directors, if you're trying to reach chief marketing officers, you can program the, them in natively to Sales Navigator. Now you think, well, why does that matter? Our sales team and our salespeople know, and I know, who my prospects are. Well, what LinkedIn's been doing is trying to bolt in more intelligence into their platform so that it gives you more tools to be able to get meaningful conversations with uh, prospects. And because of the outreach volumes falling, actually the relevance of outreach, the not just personalization, the relevance of it, and relationship-driven approaches are actually thriving. So I'll give you an example, something we're seeing right now. If you've had a conversation with a prospect on LinkedIn, uh, about anything, anything, your chance of a meeting goes up to one in four. Currently, by the way, any kind of sales outreach, the success rate is one in a hundred. So just bear that in mind. So big feature is the personas. That allows you to program Sales Navigator and say, these are the people I really want to work with. And then the great bit is the next feature that in the lead section, LinkedIn's now automatically populating lead lists which are based on people's interest or curiosity around you that match your persona. So LinkedIn's giving you every single week a hundred people saying these match your persona and they're quite receptive. So LinkedIn's tipping you off that these people have some form of interest in what you do. Now, there is another feature coming in a couple of weeks, which will be product-based intent. So this is people curious about you. There's a product-based intent feature, which we're not sure exactly how it works yet, and it will be kind of experimental. But you'll be able to search and filter by the people who are expressing interest in the types of services you offer. God knows how LinkedIn's AI and machine learning is doing this, but it's doing it. And we saw a little demo a couple of weeks ago when we were in Dublin at LinkedIn's HQ. So inside the lead list, it's basically saying these people are showing some form of interest. They can't tell you specific interest levels simply because it would be a breach of data protection. But there's a, an inkling that these people might be interested in you. So that's the recommended lead section. Now, uh, it will also go, here's all the new people at your saved accounts. So it will basically start to suggest other people who have come and joined the companies that you're targeting. So that's an obviously important feature because you can find all the new people uh, that have changed roles quickly and easily at the target accounts and go, oh, CMO's no longer there or marketing operations person no longer there. This is the new person. You, you know this information quickly. Uh, which is brilliant. Now, here's the game-changing bit. LinkedIn's built its own buyer intent. So if you plug this into a salesperson, it will basically score their target accounts or any accounts they're going after, and it will score them and basically tell you their rating. And anybody with a moderate rating, it's saying, now may be the time to reach out. So in the sales teams we've been working with, we've redesigned our process to basically go, how do we find the people who are going to be the most receptive, but also how do we plan to build relationships to open opportunities? So where there's no buying intent, you've got to find the opportunity. How do we get talking to them? So we're doing the two things together. So buying intent's really important. And when we go into this, I'll just go into eBay here. It now gives you more information about um, the buying intent. So it's massively high buying intent. And it says here, by the way, eBay employees are highly likely to accept in-mail messages from Maverick. So it's literally saying, these are the times, guys. Let's go for it. Now, you can't just go in straight with a pitch, of course, because people will ignore you. But this is the kind of flow of how we should using it. And we are seeing more focus from sales team, sales teams 
that are achieving numbers, that are hitting targets, are actually going relationships and intent-based sales. So they're combining data, buying intent with relationships to open that first call. Whereas what we would do previously is, or what a lot of people would be doing is hammering out messages to people, seeing who bites, that would give you your intent. Then you'd try and build the relationship in that first call. We're seeing it the other way around. The effectiveness is higher. You're reaching, outreaching to less people to get a higher result. Now, of course, if you turn your sales team all onto this and plug them into this, guess what's going to happen? They're going to they're going to do the same amount of work and see more results because they're now focused on people who have a buyer interest. They're using data, they're using relationships, and they're outreaching intelligently, and it's working way better. So new features, buyer intent. LinkedIn's buyer intent is incredible. You can also, just before I wrap up here, you can actually upload a list of your contacts from your CRM. So all the companies you're targeting, and it will score them by buying intent. In the account filters, you can actually search by companies that have high buying intent towards your business. So there's a, you know, there's a ton of ways that you can use this buying intent to your advantage. Now, what is the buying intent just before I wrap up? Buying intent is they've been researching your company on LinkedIn, visiting the company page, engaging with content. They've been um, uh, looking at people's profiles. Um, the, LinkedIn has a, um, its own algorithm based on years of research of how buyers behave. And we know buyers look at companies on LinkedIn as part of their appraisal process. So it's not just one thing. We also understand that LinkedIn can see their outside of LinkedIn activity. And whilst they can't reveal that, they can score people based on buying intent. So similar to how Bombora and other buying intent services work. So we are seeing LinkedIn going, let's be smart about this. Let's use data. Let's build relationships. Exactly what we've been saying for years. But now they're bringing the data into the mix to make a more intelligent and successful sales process in an environment where basically most of our prospects ignore everything that we send. They're programmed to ignore. So the relationship difference and the intelligence makes the difference in the inbox, in the message box. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that if you build that relationship and intelligently reach out, you actually get a higher response rate, which is good because I know a lot of companies are frustrated that they've, they've used email too aggressively and they've found that they've got so many do not contacts on their CRM. LinkedIn gives them an opportunity to go and talk to them on LinkedIn outside of the email and uh, outside of the email and phone environment. So all those prospects that maybe are on do not contact list for their email address or their phone number, we can actually uh, start talking to them and building relationships and repairing or connecting with those people. So if you want a, a training session on this or something more in depth, or you want to look at how our process has changed to be more effective, please drop us a line. Um, but check out these new features. They are incredible. Sales, I'm so excited because for, it felt like for the last couple of years, sales has been very much a kind of, machine gun approach. And what LinkedIn's seeing is that actually salespeople need to be snipers. If they want to hit their quotas, hit their targets, they need to be snipers. So I'd love to chat to you all about this and how it could implement into your sales team. But I thought I'd give you just a round robin of some of the features, the buying intent, the personas, and the updated search features. There is the product search feature. So you'll be able to see buying intent for particular products and services. So uh, it's incredible.